When playing through Skyrim, I was always the kind of guy who would roleplay a lot. With a lot of different playstyles, characters, all using various mods to make everything all the more immersive. One of my favorites was an adorable elf alchemist with summoning rods who loved reading, so I made it a mission to find every single book in all of Skyrim. And there are quite a lot of them. Books about history, stories, journals, spell books, etc. But one of the most famous books in all of the Elder Scrolls series is the Lusty Argonian Maid. Only famous because it's the only bit of erotica in the game as well. Well, unless you add mods for that, but uh... It's a story about a maid and her master. And she's lusty! You know, typical erotica stuff. But the thing is, she's an Argonian. You know, the lizard people. And speaking of female lizard people and their lust, why do they even have breasts? If you haven't gathered already, this video will talk about breasts. Yes, breasts. Real mature subject, I know, but this is a legitimate question asked by quite a few people on the internet, including myself. It's a genuine query, you see. The thing is, breasts are basically exclusive to humans unless you count cows and goats with their udders. Breasts are made of fat and mammary glands, the mammary glands being the part that produces milk to feed babies. And some adults. Really, it's a lot less weird than drinking from a bovine. Anyway, all mammals have mammary glands. That's why they are called mammals. They have mammaries. The vast majority of mammals only get swollen mammaries when they are pregnant and are having to feed their offspring. When the offspring get older and stop drinking milk, the mother's mammaries will shrink back down to normal. Humans, goats, and cows are the exceptions to this. But this is the whole thing. Mammaries belong to mammals. Exclusively. There are no known exceptions to this, like how platypuses and echidna lay eggs instead of giving live birth despite being mammals, or like how some sharks and snakes give live birth instead of laying eggs. No. Mammary glands are, by definition, exclusive to mammals. And a mammal must have mammary glands to be considered one. But Argonians are lizards, reptilian people. Reptiles. They are covered in scales, have spikes along their back, along with horns, they lack outward ears, they have spiky teeth, all that jazz. There are no breasts to be found on lizards. Realistically, they should be flatter than a cutting board. Or should they? Is there perhaps a scientific explanation for why female Argonians would have these, if not breasts, chest lumps? First, let's look at a few possibilities, and then figure out the likelihood of each. For theory number one, we have the air bladder theory. This is the theory I found most commonly online, people discussing this. One of the unique abilities that Argonians have is the ability to breathe underwater. But looking at them, there are no visual gills, and for anything as big as an Argonian to be able to breathe underwater, you would need some pretty huge gills. So perhaps all the Argonians are really doing is holding its breath in the same way many other reptiles do. For instance, crocodiles usually hold their breath for 15 minutes, but can easily do so for two hours, and in extreme conditions, can survive by only breathing every eight hours. And from a game design aspect, it makes more sense to just say they can breathe underwater than it does to program a breath meter that lasts for eight hours. So when an Argonian needs to, they'll fill these bladders, which are right in front of their lungs, with air. And so now they can hold their breath for a very extended period of time. But then why would only the female ones have these air bladders? Well, it might not only be the female ones. All of them do, but that doesn't mean they need to have them extended all the time. They can choose to have them full or empty whenever, but for the sake of existing in a society almost entirely made up of mammals, the female Argonians decide to keep them filled to give themselves a more feminine look. This makes things a bit easier for their mammalian counterparts to be able to tell the sex of the Argonian by just looking at it. This way they wouldn't perhaps assume an Argonian is male and be taken aback when they hear a female voice come forth. It just helps clear up a few minor inconveniences, yes, but the way you portray yourself subconsciously affects everyone around you. First impressions are made within the first five seconds of seeing someone. So that difference can do a lot, especially since it'll help you avoid some awkward situations. But I put this theory up first because I think it is the most unlikely, despite seemingly to be the most popular option online. You don't see male Argonians suddenly grow two bumps on their chest when they're underwater. 
and they may not even need air bladders to hold their breath that long, or even gills to breathe underwater. Scientists studying sea turtles recently found out that they are in fact able to breathe underwater, but not in the way we traditionally think of breathing. They don't do it through lungs or gills. They have swollen glands around their anuses and their tongues that are able to just absorb oxygen right from out of the water. Now, they aren't as efficient as their lungs are, of course, but they allow the turtles to breathe underwater for up to four months. So gills and air bladders aren't really needed. Argonians may have oxygen-sucking oral and anal glands instead. So I'd say this theory, while a decent theory, is debunked. Especially since it turns out Argonians do have gills. They're just way too small for their body, realistically speaking. So possibility two, egg sacs. So what is the one thing that basically every female species has that the males don't? Eggs. Females have eggs. Even mammals have egg cells inside the ovaries. Males have sperm, which combines with the egg to fertilize them and produce offspring. Some animals, like fish, will lay eggs and then the male fish ejaculates all over them. Others, like birds and reptiles, will mate in the traditional way, and the sperm fertilizes the egg cells inside the female, which will then develop inside until either the eggs are laid in the nest, or a baby is fully developed from the egg inside until birthed out live. Various animals have various means of storing their eggs once laid. Most commonly, it's a nest of sorts, but some go a step further. For instance, seahorses. Once the female has her eggs fertilized, and they have developed a short bit, they transfer the eggs into the male for safekeeping until they hatch. Some spiders will put their eggs into a sack of web and never let go of them for months until they hatch. There's also the common Suriname toad, most famous for her storing her eggs inside of her back until they hatch, and little baby frogs come out in one of nature's most disturbing displays. <laughs> uh. And that's just once fertilized. Females also always have organs for storing non-fertilized eggs as well. So animals of all kinds have tons of different ways of carrying their eggs. Argonians may be a species that has a very unique means of doing so as well. Sacks on the chest of the female. So touching a female Argonian's chest would be more like feeling a scaly beanbag chair, more so than a fatty water balloon. This theory would explain why it's only the females that have the sex, but if anything, I feel like it creates more questions than it answers. The breasts are very far away from the reproductive organs, or at least where we can assume that they are. Argonians are weird. The sperm would have to travel a massive distance to reach the eggs. Normally, sperm only have to travel about four inches, and that often takes days to do so. So imagine having to travel a few feet. Sperm only have a lifespan of 72 hours. So, three days. So unless Argonians have the fastest sperm in existence, there's no way they would be able to reproduce this way, unless perhaps the breasts are where only fertilized eggs go. But that would mean every female Argonian in Tamriel is pregnant all the time. Though, I suppose they are a bit more of an animalistic race, and reproducing is super important to them because of that. So, maybe? So the egg sac theory. It's a theory. I'd say it's not the case, but it's a decent guess. Possibility number three, they are lumps of fat exclusively, and they evolved for psychological reasons. Now that sounds strange, doesn't it? But this is similar to what I mentioned in the first theory. The existence of lumps on the chest of females helps differentiate them from males, which if anything is more beneficial to the other races more so than to themselves. I'm sure Argonians can tell all of the sexes apart just fine. Anyway, biologically in this theory, the breasts serve no additional purpose to them beyond just fat storage. They are just lumps of fat. But it would make sense that they would be this way when considering the violent evolution possibly involved. Even in modern Tamriel, Argonians are a lowly race and are primarily slaves. So could you imagine what life was like for them before they were finally accepted into just being slaves? Initially, they may have just been seen as bipedal animals by the other races and possibly killed for sport, or at least were never shown any mercy when raided or mugged. Since it's not like you're killing anyone important or even sentient or anything. But over the eons, the survivors were the ones that happened to be more humanoid, more human looking, especially more human female due to the old don't harm the women and children sense of morality. So the ones with larger fat deposits on their chests 
would live to produce more offspring, and sure enough, they would adapt, and their larger chests on the female became the norm. They look more human, and thus are treated a bit more like them as well. It's all psychological. There have been tons of studies about how breast size can change people's perception of you, for both the better and the worse. Some studies have found that staring at breasts can increase a man's lifespan by five years, and others have found that some men see women with larger breasts as stronger. More you-go-girl fem power, while others see more endowed women as needing more protection, not necessarily because they are weak, but because they would make better reproductive partners. They have good genes. These particular attitudes were all especially true in the olden days of yore, the medieval ages, of which most fantasy games are based on. It's all subconscious, and this subconscious advantage could make all of the difference for this lowly race of slaves. But now on to possibility number four, Argonians are mammals. Argonians, being reptilian in nature, would most likely lay eggs, but Mark Nelson, a game designer and writer for The Elder Scrolls, was asked about whether or not Argonians lay eggs, and this was his reply. Men and myrrh assume much about Argonians, but who among them has ventured deep into the Black Marsh and lived to tell about it? They assume that Argonians lay eggs because they resemble the tree-dwelling lizards that scurry about on four legs. Yet, they assume Argonians have live births because the females have breasts with which they might suckle their young. Perhaps it is both, as necessity demands. I wouldn't expect to hear an Argonian born in Skyrim, or Solstheim for that matter, mention being hatched. Nor would I expect to hear more transient Argonians, say members of a small nomadic tribe, speak about laying eggs. However, in warmer climates, in places with established, stable, and permanent communities, you would likely see a great number of eggs. This quote implies that Argonians can choose to lay eggs or give live birth, which isn't anything new. Fruit flies, aphids, and yellow-bellied three-toed skinks, among others, can choose to lay eggs and give live birth depending on the circumstances at the time. So if Argonians are able to choose to give live birth, that's one extra checkmark on the possibly is a mammal checklist. And even with eggs, remember, the platypus and echidna both lay eggs too. What's another reptile versus mammal thing? Warm-blooded versus cold-bloodedness. Well, these Argonians are surviving in the northern parts of Skyrim just fine. So you could easily claim that they must be warm-blooded at least to some degree. Perhaps not as warm as humans, but warm enough. But they are still covered in scales, so they have to be reptiles, right? Again, not necessarily. Introducing the pangolin. This little guy is a mammal completely covered by thick, sharp, overlapping scales it uses for defense against predators. And it's a mammal. And of course, there's also dragons, and while they are mythical in our world, they exist within Tamriel, so they are fake isn't an argument against this point. But while not the most modern interpretation of dragons, some ancient versions of the mythical dragon are mammalian and give birth to live dragons. Some even have fur and are more beastly than lizardly, yet still have scales in amongst the fur. So taking all of that into consideration, as well as Argonians are a fantasy race so they can be whatever the creators want, you could say that Argonians are indeed more mammalian than we assume, and the breasts on the female are indeed used for producing milk for their offspring. But then there's the issue of how the baby Argonians would use them. Lizards do not have lips, or jaws in the same way that we do. So Argonians would have a really hard time creating suction, since their mouths are so wide and long. Plus, could you imagine what the poor mother would go through when the baby starts teething? Argonian teeth are like knives! <laughs> Plus, all of this begs the question of whether or not Argonians even have teats. The part of an animal right outside the mammary glands which secretes the milk. Skyrim being Skyrim has a massive modding community, and various nude mods have given Argonians these teats, but most don't because of the whole Argonians are reptiles and reptiles cannot have teats thing. But considering how rough and scaly Argonian skin is, a soft teat to suck on wouldn't really fit. Unless, of course, female Argonians are more like how this particular mod portrays them, and they have soft spots around the area where teats would be. So it's very possible, but so is them not having teats at all. Bringing up the platypus again, they have mammary glands and give milk to their young, but they have no teats at all. Instead, milk just secretes itself out of their normal day-to-day -day pores on the skin by its underarm. My goodness. They really are just bottom-of-the-barrel leftover parts.
So the same could be said for Argonians. Rather than a soft teat that the baby is incapable of sucking on in the first place, a spot where milk comes out between the scales makes more sense, and the baby then just laps it up with its tongue like a lizard would, much like these geckos and their cereal. So far, this seems to be the best theory, but I've yet to bring up some of the deepest bit of lore. And for theory number five, we'll pull elements from the previous theories and make one big solid theory, taking this huge chunk of lore into consideration. Possibility number five, the most likely right one. The Elder Scrolls is a massive series, and I don't just mean in popularity. I mean, their games are all huge worlds with characters, with backstories, and the amount of lore is massive. There are so many books to read, people to talk to, histories to learn. It's awesome. But sometimes there is so much lore that to some people it seems like so little. For instance, most people have played Skyrim more than any of the others, likely just because it's easier to get into and had a very successful marketing campaign, but unless you go back and play some of the previous games as well as read the actual books, then there will be a ton of lore that you have just no idea about. And that's what I'm talking about here. Some hidden lore that may just explain why Argonian females have breasts. Now, in the game canon specifically, if you don't count anything outside of them, this is considered to be a legend, but all legends have some truth to them. And considering that the Daedra, dragons, the divines, and all this stuff exists in their world, it wouldn't be a stretch to at least say that this legend is also true, and to a large extent it is, because it happens in the books outside of the games. So, Argonians believe their souls were given to them by the Hist, and according to them, there was nothing before the Hist. This would explain why Argonian souls are different from the souls of everything else. Oh yeah, in case you didn't know that. So what are the Hist? They are a species of giant spore trees deep within Black Marsh, the region the Argonians are from. Argonians have a deep connection with the Hist, and feel that everything they know is thanks to it. The further they are away from a Hist tree, the less of a connection they feel, and they will soon begin to lose their ability to understand gestures and speech. This of course causes Argonians to have a very close bond with the Hist, and so they call themselves People of the Root. Argonians also claim that these trees are sentient, all-knowing beings that created not all life on Tamriel, but a large chunk of it, such as all life in Black Marsh. Because of this connection, they often lay their eggs directly underneath Hist trees, especially the Great Hist tree where most Argonians in Black Marsh are born. Going on a bit of a tangent now to talk more about the Hist, there's a floating island called Umbriel, which is said to float because the Hist trees which reside on it will it to be so. There is also the Realm of the Hist, which is a mysterious realm of oblivion. As legend says, this realm of oblivion was mostly destroyed, and a small corner of the realm manifested itself into Tamriel and became Black Marsh. And speaking of this, the sleeping tree in Skyrim is possibly a baby Hist tree. Legends say that when the Red Mountain erupted in Morrowind, it blasted a rock clear to Skyrim, and from the rock came the Sleeping Tree with its magical mist and magical healing sap. Though other legends say it fell from the sky from a floating island, likely referencing Umbriel. Hist sap is said to not only heal those who drink it, but it also increases the overall combat ability of those who do. But with the side effect of it sending the drinker into a raging bloodlust. <laughs> You know, normal stuff. However, when Argonians drink it, it is said they receive hallucinations and communicate with the Hist trees, and this sap also has the ability to alter many living organisms, especially Argonians. In fact, Argonian hatchlings lick up the sap in large quantities before being weaned off of it. But it is said that when Argonians begin to exit their juvenile stage of life, they will begin licking up more sap, which stimulates their hormonal glands, which sprouts from them the appropriate organs for non-Argonians to more easily tell the sex of the Argonian. Oh, of course, it's something so simple like that. How dare you lengthen this video with wrong theories when there's extra lore that just explains everything? You could have just said that! Except that's not fun at all! <laughs> Go away. So it's possible that Argonian breasts truly are just for show after all. After all, everything is better with breasts on it. 
Explorers have found cave drawings that depict an Argonian-like race, but they appear to be more tree-like. This, including everything else we've talked about, leads me to this conclusion. These sentient trees created the Argonians initially as physical manifestations of themselves, perhaps to protect their stationary tree bodies that lack protection. Initially, Argonians were tree-like, but over the eons they've been modifying their look with the use of the magic sap, and the Argonians' natural ability to adapt. Over eons, the sap makes them significantly more humanoid, so that they and the other races may better understand one another, see eye to eye, and avoid confusion. Or even, just for the Argonians' protection, as the other races begin showing them more mercy as they begin to look less and less like animals. So as far as putting the pieces of lore together go, I think that is very true. But does that truly mean that Argonian breasts are in fact useless? Not necessarily. Now, once again, just to clarify, we are entering the realm of theory. Being as adaptable as Argonians are, being able to breathe underwater, being a reptile at their base but also have feathers, warm blood, and be able to choose between giving live birth or laying eggs, you could say that some additional adaptation was given to the females by the Hist to better raise their young while away. Yes mammary glands, though not necessarily literal mammary glands. Perhaps, rather than giving off milk, Argonian females may be able to store or even produce small amounts of hist sap in case they give birth while too far away from a hist tree. Argonians used to be part tree after all, and while of course later on she'll need to bring her young to a tree, having this ability would certainly be beneficial, since naturally Argonians all drink a large amount of sap at hatching. And they could still secrete this nutritious, sap-like, milkish substance without being considered mammalian. As it turns out, pigeons give milk to their young as well. Well, not milk exactly, but the same idea. They have glands deep in their throat that secrete a milk-like, nutritious, thick liquid that mixes with the food they regurgitate to their hatchlings. So, creating nutrients for your young isn't exclusively a mammalian thing. Just milk is. So, it's very possible that the Hist gave female Argonians breasts that can secrete a sort of Hist sap substitute for their young that comes out through small pores between their scales and drips down. The babies then lick it up the way lizards do, no impossible suction necessary. But, that is just another possibility. Now you know a bunch of possible reasons why Argonians have breasts, some more possible than others. This was definitely one of gaming's most important questions, and I was honestly not expecting it to take this long to answer, jeez. But I hope I've entertained you long enough to reach this point in the video, and now you can share this video with other fans who ponder the same thing. And here's another very important question for you. Why don't the Khajiit have six breasts? Why do the Zora fish people have breasts? Why do Inklings have breasts? All of those questions can be answered in this playlist right here. So until next time, please remember, just never, just never, just never, just never stop you snoozing that snuggin'.